Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the so the so I do two things. Uh, so I'm the creator of Jenkins, and uh, for those of you who don't know what Jenkins is, it handles everything from you know your code commit all the way to the running applications and stuff in between. So it lets you play the Mario Kart, it lets you watch the quotes from Chuck Norris, and we got everything covered. So the company that I work for, CloudBees, um, so put shortly, you know, what Red Hat does to Linux, we do to Jenkins. So uh, we are the one that we are the biggest contributor to the Jenkins project. Um, we provide the enterprise version of Jenkins, support, training, professional services, that sort of things. Um, now, Jenkins works really well with Kubernetes. Whenever I see interesting runtime environment like Kubernetes, I think about, well, like what, what does it take to run Jenkins inside? So I got this little thing called Raspberry Pi. I managed to run Jenkins inside. One of my colleagues got Tesla. I haven't managed to run Jenkins inside it, but it's coming. And then when I saw Kubernetes, well, it would be nice, it'd really nice if you can run Jenkins inside um, the Kubernetes. So that's what the, one of the uh, plugins that the community has developed does. So it lets you sort of start the build and uh, the test workload inside the container in Kubernetes. So Jenkins is a place to run the build and test. So you know when it comes time to do the build, it has some, you know, it needs some place to run it. So Kubernetes is basically like a nice place to do that environment. So if I can switch over to the demo machine. Um, so here I, I have my Jenkins instance, and I already explained to Jenkins where my Kubernetes is running. So um, if I go to the system configuration screen, I told um, the Jenkins that my, about my endpoint uh, where I'm running Kubernetes in. Um, I'm sorry, not there. Down here is where I'm, you know, the credential necessary to talk to it, and also um, I specified what image to run. So this. It's the container image that contains my, you know, the build tools and whatnot, and then that's basically it. So now I switch my hat and I become a developer, and then say I made a change, I made a commit to a new web app, and then uh, Jenkins would do the build automatically, but in here I'm just going to start the build manually. And then so it shows up in a queue, which basically means the Jenkins is realized, oh, I need to do this build, and uh, I don't have a place to run the build, so I'm gonna get one from Kubernetes. And I, while I was talking about it, it already got the, oop, it was almost got the machine provision, and then I don't know, it went back to the queue. All right, so here it came back. So, um, so it got the new vert, uh, container provision from Kubernetes, and now it's running a build inside. So in this way, you always get like a fresh, new build machine that contains the right set of tools. You don't have to worry about managing like in a 20 or like a 200 build states that all consistently formatted. And at the end of the build, this instance will disappear into ether. So you can share the single resource pool uh, with, uh, with um, everything, uh, with, with, with all the other workload that you might have. So that's one way to run you know, Jenkins inside Kubernetes. So you can turn the you run this install deployment into your build cluster. And now if I can switch back to the slides. So, you know, finding place to run Jenkins might be my passion, but I think you're probably more interested in deploying, delivering your applications that you're running for your organizations. So often in the organizations that we go to, people have deployments, I mean, the, what we call as a continuous delivery pipeline, right? So you have the source code that's set to say committed into libraries that it's gradually packaged into bigger units that then becomes the package as a container, then deployed into Kubernetes, then you run some set of tests, and then you share away the instance, and so on and so forth. So pretty quickly, it gets you know, the non-trivially complex. So in Jenkins, we have this subsystem called Jenkins Workflow, and in here you can define your continuous delivery pipeline very nicely that works with Kubernetes. So that's the, my second demo that I wanted to show to you. So in here, um, I have another job called the CD pipeline. So what this does is basically, um, I have a source code repository on the GitHub uh, that contains, in this case, a pet clinic application. 
and it has a standard, you know, the, uh, the build script that's in the Maven poem. It has a, uh, the Docker file to package this up, but it also has this Jenkins file, which is basically the definition of the CD pipeline. So in this case, you know, I didn't go for something too fancy, so all it basically does is it just, you know, checks out the code, uh, do the build inside another container so that it has the right images and whatnot, the right tools and whatnot, and then I push the image up into the uh, Google Container Registry, and then finally I just de deploy that application uh, into the, say, a, a particular environment. But you know, you can easily imagine keeping the script more, and keeping extra scripting here to do uh, the, you know, some kind of testing, uh, and then once that passes, you can deploy, let's say, deploy it to some kind of soak testing environment and keep running it for a week. At the end of the week, it could shut down this, uh, the, the uh, current environment and then bring on, uh, move it on to the another environment and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do um, is I could just get this going here um, and then this will, um, this will check out the code, start running the workflow, um, and at the end of it, it deploys things into Kubernetes. Now, the, so one of the things that the Jenkins brings here, for example, in the workflow is, for example, it manages the credentials and so on automatically. So as you see here, well, for us to deploy image into the GCR, a Google Container Registry, you have to have the right credential available. And in, you know, as a build cluster, Jenkins needs to make sure that it's available at the right machine at the right time. So this script kind of takes care of those things. And the same thing about you know, the deploying application into Kubernetes. You have to know where the endpoint is, you have to know the right credential, and you don't normally want to tie these things into your script. So you know, we, we divide that role between the script that is part of the source code repository and then part of Jenkins, which is what this, um, the actual credential value is. So that's basically it. Um, if I switch back to the last slide to do the conclusion slide. Um, yeah, so you know, Jenkins and Kubernetes can work in basically two ways. If you're running Jenkins, you can run it on Kubernetes and then get a great build environment. Uh, if you're developing applications for Kubernetes, then you can build a great CD pipeline for it. So that's basically what I wanted to show. Thank you very much.